Why do you write? Why, why do you want to write? And what value does it have for you to, to try and tell these stories? <laughs> it's a big question. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it goes back to reading, I guess, in some ways. Um, um, being first moved by a piece of language and being moved by poetry of a, of a description and realizing that, um, you know, that that's well within my reach to accomplish and 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 then there's that then there's then it becomes the need or the desire to tell a story and to express the moment why do i mean sometimes i get up in the middle of the night you know from a dream and i know i have to i know this what i'm doing must be written so in some ways it's unexplainable that question why why does the artist go to paint why does the musician pick up the guitar um it, it, it's um you know it, it it's it, it's sometimes a need and, and, and you know and, and, and once once it's a once 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 that need is sort of out there on the page and the vision becomes maybe more clear then it becomes the craftsman to come in and, and fix what started and and, and and hone and develop and and, and polish that that original impact. <laughs> Meanwhile, the dandelion sprouted and speckled the windswept soccer field, and the eighth graders could smell the end of their tenure at Hebrew Academy. For many, the uneasy truce was heightened by the spiritual contemplation, in which, donning their tefillin, the eighth graders prayed deep into the morning to be granted answers to the difficult questions raised by the dispute. Was Chernyakatovskaya spelling a sin, or was she a silent visionary? How could Joey Kaplan fall into Finkman's camp? Was Adam Finkman hateful? Did Chernyakatovskaya have the courage to shatter the record after all? Where would this controversy lead us? The grim solitude combined with the strange yearning created by the pungent absence of spelling served to crystallize a dilemma that bore at the heart of Chernyakatovskaya's mystique. Could a person adhere to the Torah and at the same time venture into those mystifying realms of knowledge that tradition had left unmapped. The, myster the mystery seemed to cloud the synagogue, and the only flicker of light amid the swirling darkness was Rabbi Felsenthal's resounding words of judgment. We must decide for ourselves. Felsenthal's resounding words. But then, you know, going beyond that, you must go a much beyond, I think a lot beyond that when, when you know, I think there's a few details, something like 600 and something, you know, good deeds. I think there's a reference to that in the story that that's, there are something like 600, I forget what the number is, 14 um, actual, you know, rules in a sense that I didn't know. Um, I didn't memorize all 614, but, you know, <laughs> occasionally, you, you know, you, you, I'll, I'll, I'll research some that I think might be pertinent and, and you know, the thing about spelling out God. You, know, you can't spell out God. That's one of them, and, and but that's something I see in a lot of the writing, which you know is uh, you know really interesting. You know the um, the mitzvah is that they shouldn't write out God, as it says here, because God is undestroyable, and everything written and human really will eventually pass and move on. So it's kind of a you can't do that. Oh, it's that's like, the reason. Yeah, yeah. So what do they put instead? G dash D. Oh. G dash D is the convention. Mm -hmm. wow. uh, and things that uh, that have you know sometimes you just have to write it um, that that you know the side point though but the, the, those papers have to be buried like a like a person you know you have to bury that stuff you can't you can't throw it away and you can't burn it because it's it's got his name on it it's disrespectful um, and since tradition's such a part of the story really it's another it's the theme you know. Um, right. You got to get that stuff right. Right, you got to get that stuff right, and you have to explore and investigate those avenues that m you might find a moment like that that turns out to be really a 
a crucial plot point in the story when when that there's a dispute raised about spelling out that word and and especially you know spelling out God is you know has spiritual and religious really important implications and spelling as well and so it's kind of the nexus there between those two things which really the story is so it was again a you know a, a gold find to to sort of use that piece of you know research into the story yeah how many years past the events is the narrator because we've talked about the use of narration and he's obviously got the narrator has a wonderful vocabulary and things he's not mm -hmm. in ninth grade anymore I don't mm -hmm. think mm -hmm. you know how many years past is he yeah he an eighth grader does not obviously talk like this um, yet I think the, the, the point of view um, maybe sort of stretches his abilities, you know, for the sake of humor, for the sake of, um, I don't know, for the sake of the storytelling. So, you know, I think he remains, you know, really in the dramatic present of the reading. You know, he's he's really right there. The use of narration. Um, okay, so where did you get the inspiration for KDC? I'm not going to try and say your name, but it's fun to hear you pronounce it. Junya <clears throat> Kiarovskaya. Well, uh, the story was started, actually, it began with the last moment, the final moment, um, I teach in a Jewish school, and Tamar Labicki, uh was um, asked me, I don't know what happened, but she asked me a question. This is something about the way she said it and who she was, really, and in the context of this moment in the class, it was the spark for the story, which turned into the end of the story as a speller saying something that, that the, the, the person on the other end didn't understand or didn't hear or somehow lost. And so it turned into, it began with the last scene, the composition, the, a, 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 a sort of unique person standing in front of a group and saying, uttering letters one after another, but, but somehow they were lost. Somehow they were, they were um, misunderstood, and somehow they, they, we couldn't exactly figure out what that person had said, even as best we tried to backtrack and r retroactively kind of um, understand what she said. We couldn't. And so it started with that scene, and then I like that scene, and then it built into this character. So who were kind of immigrant kids who were coming in, and you know there was some like class issues or some clique issues going on between mm -hmm. them. And is this a true life thing? Absolutely, right. The Russian immigrants that come over. You know, I teach in a small private Jewish school, and uh, when they come over they <coughs> and they, they go to our school, they're, they're you know, I, I, you know, it, it's pretty. I think straight. I. I described it as, as honestly as I could here, I think, and, and as, um, you know, in some ways it's, it's humorous and it, there's a real tension there, I think, between the, 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 the Russian immigrants who, you know, who swear and who, you know, wear jewelry and baggy pants and maybe a little more urban or, or I don't, you know, a little, little definitely more. They say they, 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 they grew up a lot faster than some of the traditional families. So there's that tension in our, in our community between those two. So. Um, I would, you know, the obvious choice is to put Chernyakatovskaya as one of, one of those, you know, outsider, outside the, the mainstream, mm -hmm. somebody who's going to, you know, um, you know, be viewed as, as an outsider. And, yeah. and as a, How do you feel if you have a story, have you that had this happen, where you have a story that you think you should tell or that you're kind of obsessed about and it comes and then you don't get it done or you don't get it done right? Yeah. Is that a problem for a writer? Yeah. It's a big problem. <laughs> big problem, you know. Um, and hopefully, you still have that original impetus available to access when you go to work. Because you know, in the end, this took a year, and I wasn't working constantly. You know, I work. You know, try to work some a little bit here every day. You know, and try to find that magic that was the birth of the story, and and maybe that birth is gone. Maybe that moment when Tamar Labicki said something and I forget. You know, that's gone. But then you still have the the ingredients here to kind of regenerate that that moment. So, you know, you have to you know to strike while you're hot, but you also have to just you know strike while you're cold, and, and there's nothing there, and you have to go to work, and it's it's work. Um, finding it, you know, like fishing again yeah awesome thanks a lot for talking to us i know the students are really going to appreciate this all right i'm grateful that you read the story and hopefully you know it didn't bore you to tears <laughs> it didn't believe me thank you